Amen. 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 And please be seated. We bow our heads and we'll say a prayer asking the Lord God to bless, to bless our meditation. Lord, be with us today. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you for your word, Lord God. And by your word, and by the sacrifice of your son, build us up and help us to know that in Christ Jesus, we are truly and fully forgiven. Bless us as we meditate. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. My brothers, my sisters, all of you out there in cyberspace worshiping with us, Lord's blessings to you. It's always bothered me. I kind of hinted at it before the Passion reading. It always bothered me all the extra things that the Holy Spirit felt the need to record. I understand that he had to suffer and die. That was the consequences of our sin. The wages of sin is death, and we knew that that was going to come. But the Holy Spirit, for some reason, chose to record all of the times that Jesus was beaten. I think I counted four times that somebody hit him. So the one time they flogged him, whipped him in the back, nasty business there, 39 times with a, with a bone, bits of bone tied into leather straps, nasty. And then the other times they hit him in the head with a staff, they punched him in the face. Why? Why, do you, I, why did you have to record that Holy Spirit? And maybe the real question is not so much why did you have to record it, but why did he have to go through that as well? Why couldn't they just drag him to the cross and crucify him and get him over with? And it's not just that, but they 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 they, they mock him, right? Put on a, a fake crown, right? Crown of thorns. And then they bow down and mock worship him and say, Oh, hail Jesus. Why? Why do I have to hear about that every year during Lent? Why in the world did you have to record it? Why? Why did Jesus, my brother, my Savior, my God, have to go and and before these these corrupt leaders and pretend somehow that he owed them homage of some sort, as if he was subject to them? Why? And then they spit on him. I mean, you talk about suffering psychologically and emotionally and mentally, not just physically, but every single way possible. It seems like Jesus suffered, and he didn't just suffer a little bit. He said, here he is, he's going to die for the sins of the world, but we're going to make sure that his march up to the cross of Jesus Christ is as miserable and pitiful and awful as possible. Why? I've always struggled with it. If you've ever watched that Passion of the Christ movie, I, I have to fast forward to the crucifixion because there's parts of that that are just, it just, I can't, I can't do it. So why? We've been talking this Lent about remembering. Why is it that every year during, during springtime, during Lent, we, we walk with Jesus Christ to the cross and we read the same readings and we talk about the same things, the blood of Jesus Christ, and we sing the same. And why? And we're saying that it is to remember. And we talked about sometimes we need to remember that we are but dust because sometimes we get ourselves filled with pride and indignation that who am I to have to go through what I'm going through and remember that we are but dust to humble us. Sometimes we need to remember God's faithfulness, that no matter what happens, God is always faithful to his promise, and that we see that first and foremost, ultimately in the cross of Jesus Christ, that as soon as mankind fell into sin, he promised that he would send a Savior, and he did. God always keeps his promise. He never lets one of them fall. And last week we talked about the fact that sometimes the Solomon reminded us to remember our God in the days of our youth. Point is, be about your father's business now. Be about your relationship with God now. Don't wait till later down when you finish this and this is just right. This is in place. You want to live a life without regret? Be about your father's business today now because that's really what life is. 
And today we're going to walk to the cross of Jesus Christ and remember the indignities that Jesus suffered. All the terrible, awful things that he went through before they killed him. And ask ourselves why. I'm going to read to you a section of scripture. It's going to serve as our sermon text. It's more just an example of what I'm talking about. Jesus has already been arrested. He's been dragged before Annas, who is a high priest's father. They've, they've mocked him there or questioned him, and they hit him already once. And now he's before Caiaphas, an illegal gathering. You were supposed to only gather in the daytime for judgment. And I want you to listen. They're not even trying to find truth. They want to destroy Jesus one way or the other, and they're even willing to accept false testimony. They can't make it happen. And just listen to the way that they treat your brother, your God, my Savior, my God, my friend. All right? So Matthew chapter 27, beginning at verse 59, this is what is written in the book of Matthew. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence. Excuse me against Jesus so that they could put him to death. But they did not find any, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward and declared, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Are you going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ." The Son of God. Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. But I say to all of you, in the future you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look, now you have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? He is worthy of death, they answered. They spit in his face and struck him with their fists. Others slapped him and said, Prophesy to us, Christ, who hit you. This is the word of the Lord. All he had ever done was help people and heal people and love people and spoken the truth to people, and yet they wanted him dead. These were supposed to be the judgments. This is the religious leaders of the land who were supposed to mete out religious judgment. And there was nothing about it that was religious at all. And nothing about it that was fair judgment, was there? It even says there, they're looking for false testimony. They don't even need it to be true. We just need some reason to put him to death. And so they accepted all of these arguments against him that were just false. And then they hit him. And then they, it says other places, that they blindfolded him. And they stood around slapping him in the face. You're a prophet. Who hit you? And we go on and we read about Pilate. They tied him up and bound him as if he was a criminal who was going to run away and escape. and As if he was dangerous in some way. Why did the Holy Spirit record all that? Why is it that we need to remember? Why is it that pastor always reads these awful sections of scripture every Lent and make us all feel so lousy? Not to know Jesus. It's for our own good. And I think it does a couple of things. Remember the, remembering the depth of Jesus' suffering helps us understand that we truly are forgiven. Jesus didn't sort of suffer, did he? He suffered completely. He suffered totally. And the, the depths of Jesus' suffering and the completeness of Jesus' suffering emphasizes to me, cements in my mind, that my forgiveness is not sort of completed, not sort of done, but entirely done, completely done, because Jesus didn't kind of suffer. He suffered entirely and completely in every way that this world could possibly 
pour out on him. That is what he suffered. He took God's wrath, not just a little bit, but entirely. And the more that I understand the depths of Jesus' suffering, psychologically, mentally, spiritually, family-wise, with his father abandoning him, physically, I understand that Jesus suffered and paid for my sins entirely and completely. And we need to remember that. I remember when I was when I was still at the seminary, I worked for a company and I was sort of the owner's uh, assistant. Whenever he needed extra help, he would bring me over to his house. And Well, one day his basement flooded, the river flooded his basement and after it was all gone, they, he called in a cleaning company to get rid of the mold that was forming in his basement because his basement was six feet deep in water and it was horrible. So I was with him the day that the cleaning company was done and uh, the man who, who was in charge of it all was meeting and he gave out some, I don't remember what it was, some ridiculous amount of money that it was going to cost him, uh, that, that it cost him, the bill was, fumbling over my words. You know what I'm trying to say. Yes. All right. And I remember looking around at what was what was down there and I said there is no way that he got all the mold from this place. There's just no way. This this place is a disaster down here. And yet this guy began to list off all the things that he had done and how much time he had spent doing each thing and all the chemicals that he had poured into it and all the extra that he did to make sure that the mold was dead. And the more that he talked, the more things that he listed off, the more I began to realize, yeah, he probably got all the mold. And I, I think that's the same thing with all the indignities that Jesus suffered. The more I see Jesus suffer, the more I see how horribly he was treated, the more I begin to realize that Jesus really did take care of all of my sins. Not just some of them. Not just the little ones. Not just the big ones. All of them. Not just the ones that I have confessed. Not just the ones that people know about. But all of them. Because Jesus' suffering and death on our behalf was complete. And so the more that I look at Jesus' suffering, the more I recognize that God really did, that Jesus really did fulfill the punishment that was required, pay the price that was needed to pay for all of my sins. And as complete as Jesus' suffering was, so is my forgiveness. And we need to remember that because sometimes we walk around half forgiven or sort of forgiven. If I was to ask all of you, you would say, absolutely, I'm forgiven. Jesus died. He paid for all of my sins. I know that 100%. And how many times don't we walk around still with the burden of our sins on our back and around our necks? We walk around still feeling guilty about a sin from our past. Shame because of a sin that is still troubling us today. Oh, questions about whether or not we really are worthy. And if God really is happy with me. When Jesus died, and when he suffered, he didn't sort of take away our sins. He fully took them away. He drank the cup of God's wrath down to its very dregs, down to the very worst, so that you and I would know that our sins are completely and fully forgiven. Jesus did not go to that cross and die, and he did not go through all of the things that the Caiaphas and Annas and Pontius Pilate and Herod put him through. He didn't go through all of that. So you can, you and I can walk around half forgiven of our sins, still burdened, still questioning whether or not God smiles on me, whether or not God still accepts me. Jesus forgave me completely, and as complete as his suffering is, so is my forgiveness. As final as his suffering is, so is my forgiveness of sins. And there is, and there is a need for us to remember again that our sins are not just sort of forgiven, but they are completely, totally, absolutely forgiven in Jesus Christ by his suffering on the cross. It reminds me of the passage that I quoted last week. Jesus came that we might have life to the half. Three quarters. Full. 
Jesus says in the upper room as he's talking, as he's praying with his disciples, he says, I have come that you might ha- that your joy might be mostly, mostly complete. 75% done. That your joy might be 98% full. 99? Complete. Jesus' suffering and death tells us that our forgiveness of sins is full and total. And that not only is his forgiveness of us full and total and complete, and that God holds nothing against us, and that there is no room really for us to walk around with our head down. Sometimes we do it because we think we have to suffer a little bit because we did mess up, so I should be all miserable. You know, I don't want to be too happy in the forgiveness of sins because, you know, I want to give the impression, you know, that I that I don't care. So I'm gonna... No, Jesus forgave us full 100%. Not that I make excuses for my sins, not that it's okay, but I don't need to suffer for my sins anymore because Jesus suffered completely. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so sometimes we need to remember the fullness, the completeness of Jesus' suffering under the wrath of the Almighty God. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Not that there is some, there is a little bit, there is human, no, there is no condemnation. So we remember the indignities that Jesus suffered because we recognize that Jesus suffered completely. I remember reading an article a while back and I tried to find it, but I couldn't find it. It was a couple of years ago I read it about a man who, who was released from prison. He had done something dumb when he was young and he suffered the consequences of it, went to jail for it for a long time. And when he was released, he wanted to remember not only the date that he was released, but the very time that he was released. The article talked about the fact that every year on the day that he was released, on the date that he was released, he would go and he would re- he would take the time to remember what he had been through and he'd go eat the same food. There was something, I can't remember what it was. I think it's pizza. As soon as he got released, he went to Pizza Hut, I think it was, and ate a big pizza. And so every time every time that date came around, he did the same thing. He ordered pizza from Pizza Hut because he wanted to remember, commemorate that date. But it wasn't just the date, it was the time. So that every day at that time, he tries. It was like 2.38 p.m. or something like that. He tried to commemorate that time every day and take two minutes and remember what he had been through. And he said the remembering, the commemorating did two things. One, it it reminded him, it, it helped him to appreciate the freedom that he had, the release that he had been given. But it did something else. He said, it also reminded me of how horrible prison was. And I wanted to remember every day how horrible prison was so that I didn't do something dumb again, so that I stayed on the straight and narrow path that I was on because I never wanted to go back. I think remembering Jesus' indignities and the extra suffering that Jesus went through does that same thing. If we ever question whether or not sin is really serious, if we ever begin to doubt that sin has serious consequences, just look at what Jesus went through. We are fully and freely forgiven, and we need to remember that, that our sins have been taken away and there is no guilt. But it's also important that we remember that sin is not something to play around with. That sin is not just some little thing, ah, no big deal, no one got hurt. Well, out of love for our Lord Jesus, out of joy in the forgiveness of sins, as the prisoner who remembered how horrible sin was and didn't want to go back, so you and I need to remember how horrible sin is and what it does. You want to know what it does? Look at what Jesus endured. So let me never, let me not, out of love for what Christ has done, Let me flee from my sin, no matter how small I think it is or inconsequential it is. Let me not. If you ever have trouble, go look and see what Jesus endured on our behalf. Amen? Amen.
Amen. To remember. To remember the indignities that Jesus suffered. To remember that he drank the dregs of God's wrath down to the very bottom, that my sins might be forgiven to the very top. My sins are not halfway forgiven, but fully and completely because Jesus suffered fully and completely. To remember. To remember his indignities because we know, we recognize how horrible sin really is. Lord God, help me to remember what you endured on my behalf, that I might know that I am fully forgiven, that I might not go back to what was there before, but keep me on the straight and narrow path that is a relationship with you, Lord God. Help me to remember your indignities. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue with our next hymn. I know, I know that at this point many people chime or, or, or log off and disappear from worship online. Please don't. There's one announcement that I think you really need to hear, so I would ask that you please hang on with us through the announcements because there's one that's pretty important for you to hear. Um, also, just a reminder, post your prayer requests. We'll be praying through those in a minute. Oh, our song, yeah, go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> 